Danny, I recently interviewed Tom Hooper, and he said you're a real maverick yes. on set. <laughs> so what, what makes him say that? <laughs> I, I think weirdly, I think what's interesting about working with him is he's, he, I think you might say I'm a maverick, but I think he's an anarchist which is potentially slightly worse. Because <laughs> he's always going to throw something at you that is completely unexpected. Mm. So I, I think I just feed off that, to never be certain what might turn up that day. But in a way, you can always do as much prep as you can get and be totally prepared for certain scenes. And it's necessary. But I think sometimes you can prep interesting situations to, out of existence. There's an area which is sort of a grey kind of place where things happen that you never, ever are going to expect. And it might be weather or mm. any number of things that impact on the day's work. Where did Tom Hooper put you in a zone that wasn't your comfort zone? One of the things he's always passionate about is big, big wides, and then never really giving you the time to light close-ups. So you've got to come up with uh -huh. a solution where you can jump from a wide to tight as quickly as possible. The understanding is anything could happen. And I think that's sometimes really interesting because you get stuff that you would never. I mean, on Room, I mean, I think we, we kind of went in with that notion just because Jake is, uh, I think he was seven when we shot it. So trying to pin him down to anything mm. would have been, I think, exceptionally unfair. Giving the kid the freedom to just do what he was going to do or what he felt like doing meant I think you got a much more authentic performance. When I was a little older, when I was 17, I was walking home from Where school. Where was I? You were still up in heaven. But there was a guy, he pretended that his dog was what sick. What guy? Old Nick. We call him Old Nick. I don't know what his real name is. But he pretended his dog was sick. What's the dog's name? Jack, there wasn't a dog. He was trying to trick me, OK? There wasn't a dog. Old Nick stole me. I want a different story. No, this is the story that you get. Room was interesting. I mean, I was just looking at this table. I don't think this would have fitted in the room. Oh, wow. So we kind of, right from the off, <laughs> wow. made a really, st really stupid choice, which is we would do it in a room pretty much the size of this table. But Was this a real room or was it on the set? It was on the set, but we just made a kind of choice never to be able, never to take the walls out. Oh. Wow. So it's like all, all the, we, we ticked every box of what not to do when making a film. Yeah. But I think it, like going back to what we said earlier, I think those restrictions just put us in a place where we're constantly trying to reinvent the wheel and do something interesting in, in a tiny space. Have any of you walked off a film because you disagree with the vision? Uh, Danny? <laughs> no, I, I walked off a film as an assistant. I, oh, <laughs> why? Because it was really, really boring. I was a clap loader. <laughs> and, um, the film was boring or the, or the job was bold. boring? No, no, it's just <laughs> life was too short. It really? was... Uh, That's mm. great. But I, I, yeah. It was just yeah. a really... It was, I, was kind of, I was quite pleased with myself in the sense that I just it reached the point where I could not go on. Huh. Um, Did you then land another job? No, I didn't work for quite a while. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> One of the weird things that, that's happening at the moment is, so we can shoot digital, and there's this the move to get bigger and bigger cameras, bigger and bigger resolution, bigger and bigger cinemas, and there's this kind of misreading where people are watching films on their phones now. So we're striving for these fantastic epic images, mm -hmm. and you know a huge percentage of the people who are watching the film are going to watch it on a screen that size. And how do you feel when you see people watching your movies on a phone? Conflicted. I think it's just, mm -hmm. you're, it's an impossible situation. I mean, you know, 70 mil IMAX, it's amazing. If you go watch it in that cinema, it's never gonna it blows you away. Anymore. You know, it's just, it's the audience. It's kind of just sort of fragmenting in a way. Mm -hmm.